hi guys and welcome back to Game Muscle Videos. Now around Christmas time, Simitech sent us this K2 cockpit to review and uh, we put a review video up which you can click on the link that's on the screen now if you want to watch that. But I thought after having this rig for around about three months now, uh, it would be good to do a bit of a follow-up and uh, well here we are <laughs> with the follow-up of the rig and uh, what we found of it after hammering the rig with uh, Dirt Rally, Assetto Corsa, iRacing, R Factor 2, a uh, bit of R Factor 1, uh, recently Automobilista and basically just all the simulators. Um, and well I have to say uh, the rig is still in one piece despite me having a big fat ass and uh, despite me driving like a farmer out of control of a combine harvester. So uh, in terms of raw solidity uh, it looks solid when we put it together and it stayed solid. Nicely though uh, and, and more seriously the, um, the accessories that we've attached to it and the positions that we put it in uh, have stayed locked down. I, I haven't had to go back and re-tighten things uh, in that entire three month period. Occasionally I've, I've adjusted stuff. I think I've adjusted the, uh, the shifter once uh, and of course you can change the pedal angle which we've done a couple of times but anything that we've set down and I've not adjusted for example the height of the steering wheel I've not changed since putting it together uh, it's, it's not come loose and it stayed completely solid so that's fantastic. Um, another aspect that's been nice is my, my partner's a little bit of a, a midget and uh, being a woman, you know, she's vertically challenged. When she gets on the sim rig and plays dirt rally, as, as one does, she uh, needs the steering wheel closer. And so a couple of times, you know, we've moved this forwards and uh, that's been nice to just to not have to get any bolts or allen keys out to bring the wheel a bit closer for her vertically challenged body size allowing her to play games like dirt rally and uh, as you can see i'm using a uh, Vauxhall corsa car seat that obviously comes with its adjustment in terms of the backrest and then you can change the actual slide seat position now it's worth saying uh, as i said in the review as well the uh, the rig itself fits universal seat runner so basically any car seat will fit on it so it just gives you that um accessibility or, or that utility of just being able to put a car seat on and get the sliders working which then allows it to accommodate anyone and that's really not been a problem now i personally actually run the car seat <laughs> quite totally back so i have a bit of a bad back so i find it more comfortable to run in a sort of reclined bad boy uh drag racer <laughs> style when i'm doing the sim racing but uh Let's just tighten that back up. It's nice to have a rig that basically gives you that option, uh, all whilst st staying very stable. Uh, and it basically means you can set your rig up, and this is basically, I think this is the main point of having a sim rig, is that you can set your rig up how you like it and the position set. And then when you go back to sim racing after being off, everything's exactly as, as you left it and in the right place. Um, if you do drive on a desk for example which is what I used to do then uh, you sort of lose that benefit and it seems like a small thing but actually can add quite a lot to the experience just being able to jump into your rig and have everything set up uh, in the right place. Now one thing I have done since getting the rig was uh, Derek Spears was kind enough to send us a, a button box and uh, we've not attached it to the rig properly but using the shifter accessory that Simitech uh, sell on their website, that we've also attached the shifter to, uh, we've, we've managed to sort of balance the button box between the shifter and the uh, the back of the shifter holder, if you like, and put a bit of blue tack on it. And although it's not the most stable way and not the proper way of doing it, that's actually worked quite well. So we can hammer on these buttons and it, you know, it flexes a little bit, but all stays in place. And of course the, the shifter bracket, the shifter accessory bracket, um, doesn't move at all which is great um, I'm trying to think of uh, of negatives with the rig as it is now I know Simitech are in the process of changing things like uh, this monitor the monitor mount uh, they're working on separating that from the rig because obviously if it's if it's attached to the rig if you start shaking violently your monitors will move though to be honest it's the entire rig moving from being ridiculous <laughs> rather than the monitors loosely shaking but they're going to separate the monitors off so that they're completely isolated and that will also give you the advantage of being able to tuck things away if you if you wanted to put the rig more in the corner when you're not using it 
Um, the I think the keyboard tray on the uh, Simitech cockpit is a little bit uh, flimsy. I think that's a difficult one for, for cockpit designers. I've seen this. This is an issue on on a lot of uh, cockpits. Is that the to have the keyboard tray be able to move and actually have an arm that comes out means that it's going to be inherently flexible to some extent, unless it's really really bulked up. Um, personally, I I've found it better to not even bother with the keyboard tray for the most part. I just put the keyboard by the floor and I grab it. Now it is usable, but of everything in the rig, I think the keyboard tray probably is the the, the worst part or the least uh, solid part of the rig. The uh, there's a mouse tray as well, but that's that's completely solid on there. But it's a bit too small unless you sort of put an extender on it. What I use this mouse tray for is uh, actually attaching a. I've got a phone clip. I've not got it with me, but I attach my mobile phone onto it. So when I'm streaming, I've got a little uh, Twitch stream screen there. So that's that's handy to have. Uh, and nice and solid, but that could do with being extended a little bit if it wants to have more utility as mouse mat. But again, uh, personally, when I'm using my keyboard and mouse, I think it's just easier to have them on the floor and then just grab them and, and, and use them on your on your legs. The handy leg mouse mat when you actually want to use a mouse and keyboard. Uh, and for the most part with simulators, if you've got a button box, you've got a wheel with lots of buttons on it, you don't really have to be uh, using a mouse and keyboard that often. Now... Um, Let's have a look at the, the, the solidity of it, actually. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the steering wheel and show how sturdy and solid the actual wheel mount part and the actual this the, the forward part of the rig is. Because I think this is something that is uh, maybe lacking on some of the other rigs out there uh, where Simitech uh, have really uh, nailed it. And you do notice this, I've been using it a lot, how solid the rig is especially for its price point it's a ridiculously solid rig for its price so what i'm going to do is take the wheel off this part and i'm going to do some gymnastics to give a bit of a demonstration of how solid things are and hopefully it doesn't break because if it does that'll be uh, quite embarrassing indeed um let's hope uh let's let's see let's let's put it to the test now i weigh uh, about 13 point well, about 13 and a half kilograms. And not kilograms, that's a bit light. About 13 and a half stone. Uh, it depends. I seem to go up and down a stone every now and again. So, this is the, the, the pedal plate. I don't know if you can... Let's see. Can you see me? Yeah, you can see me. I'm standing on the pedal plate now. At, right at the back of the pedal plate. Uh, if this fails now, I'm going to smash my computer up, which I just built recently. So, that wouldn't be good. But I can jump up and down the pedal plate. There's no flex on that at all. Uh, and you know I've been using this with the Cubsport V2 pedals and uh, it, it doesn't bend really it's, it's pretty much solid and as you can see I'm jumping up and down the the rig's moving a tiny bit it's partly because my carpet is flexing the floor's moving a little bit tiny bit of flex with uh, let's just say 13 stone of, uh, of fat ass on it and uh, well that's that so let's get on the monitor stand if I have to call in if, if this breaks and I end up uh, <laughs> we end up having to call an ambulance because I have to explain to the NHS. Uh, yeah, I was just climbing up my sim rig and that's how I ended up breaking my legs. Um, so I'm stood on the back of the monitor stand now. Uh, and I'll jump up and down a little bit. There's no real bend. The You can see there's a bit of left and right wobble. If I move my whole body weight left and right, there's a little bit of wobble left and right. But... To be honest, I don't know how that could be avoided. Uh, you could, I mean, I guess you could put a bar against your simmer going to wobble, but any simmer is going to wobble like that, as far as I can tell. I'll try and get my head in, in frame. Um, now, this is the dangerous part. <laughs> We're going to move forwards from the back of the simmer. Actually, I'm going to enter, enter from the front. Never enter from the rear, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm going to die doing this. I, I mean, I do I do trust it is solid. I've been using it and it is solid, but you know, when you put your life on the line, that's the that's the real test. So, okay, there's the the wheel platform. <laughs> we're we're testing it we're testing it slowly, one step at a time. I'm, I'm partly worried about the T300 snapping. Uh, microphone okay so 
<laughs> it's the ultimate test. Uh, 13 and a half kilograms on the on the actual wheel mount bar, we'll call it. Call it, and that this bit's coming forwards off the rig. It, you know, let's double check that it's locked down. Actually, <laughs> it's, okay, that's locked down. It's it's locked down. We're good. Let's get on here. So. That's 13 kilograms on the front bar of the uh, what the wheel attaches to. Now I'm going to try and stand on the actual. There you go. I'm stood. <laughs> I'm stood on the actual plate that the T300 is resting on now. So that's 13 kilograms, and I'm jump bouncing up and down a little bit. I'm not jumping in the air off it. Okay, I am now, and it's not moving. Well, clearly the rig is moving and uh, I only just noticed this in the video. It turns out my feet aren't that good at detecting motion. So uh, if there's an earthquake, I'll be totally fine, but everyone else will be screaming and running for cover. I do think though, it is actually quite impressive how little the rig is moving with my lard ass gymnastics on top of the uh, part where the steering wheel attaches to. The, uh, the real test, of course, will be to stick something like an OSW or an Force wheel on this rig and uh, really go at it with the driving to see how much it moves there. Okay, so I've just put my put the wheel back in now. Um, but that's it. I mean, the only thing I wouldn't stand on in this rig is the keyboard tray. Uh, but as I say, that has to be a certain length and it has to be kind of small so it doesn't get in the way. And the only, the only other negative would be probably the, the gear shifter mount. Uh, allowing the gear shifter to be in the right place for where you'd want a shifter it means that it, it can get in the way of your knee a bit and getting in and out of the rig means that you sort of have to lift yourself up and under your shifter it does depend how you mount your shifter on this though I've, I've got the SHH shifter here but you can obviously mount you can turn this upside down and you could mount some shifters on top of it like the uh, Fanatec shifter for example or the uh, TH8A I think you could orientate different and you can move this forwards and backwards a bit but the actual bar the initial bar that you attach this plate to comes out such that you can potentially bang your knee on it if you're sat in certain positions. Now, uh, separate to all that, as I say, Simitech are changing the design of their monitor stand or they're going to do a different monitor stand where it's separate to the rig. But the one I've got at the moment is the one that's attached to the rig and uh, it allows you to tilt the side screens uh, all the way out. <laughs> And, and you can also bring them pretty much all the way in. And nicely the position of them means that when you do bring them in, you can overlap the, the middle bezel nicely without it actually without this monitor crashing into your center monitor and breaking it. Um, but one thing of note with this current monitor stand is that there's no vertical adjustment of the screens individual to the screens themselves. Um, so you really do need to have three identical monitors Otherwise, as you see here, I've got different monitors. This one mismatches with, with the center screen, so the position of it's not perfect. Um, another aspect of the monitor stand is that there's no, um, there's no uh, sort of uh, ability to adjust the, the depth of the monitors incrementally. There, there's a couple of uh, bolts you can pick, so you can move them further back or further forwards, but when it's locked down, it's pretty much locked down, and you wouldn't want to spend the time changing it to be honest it'll probably take about 10 minutes or so to change it uh, and maybe it could be a little bit closer to to the wheel but as you can see here the center monitor is pretty much on the steering wheel so if they were going to have it closer it would it would have to be a lot higher and it'd have to to line up with the wheel there so that's more of a preference thing i think because with how it is now you've got solidity and as i say they are changing their monitor design to something that's going to be separate from the rig. So maybe that'll allow you to adjust them further and closer uh, more easily. So all in all, as I say, for, for the money, I don't think this rig could be beaten. It's worth saying that Simitech did send me the, the rig and the accessories for free. And they did sponsor my, uh, my, they sponsored my Twitch stream with the uh, Simitech banner on the bottom. So... Uh, I hope that hasn't corrupted my view and made me bias. Uh, from the rigs I've used, uh, I can't think of anything better. And as I say, the only problems with it are the potential banging of your knee on the shifter and the uh, the keyboard tray being a little bit uh, flimsy, which is a problem which has 
pretty much the case with most rigs. The only rigs in terms of solidity that were better uh, are rigs that I've used, like the, the Vasaro rig, but then that costs you 10 plus thousand pounds. So really, uh, that's an unrealistic amount of money. That's, that's more the type of rig that people are going to use for displays and expos. Uh, they're saying that the Cinematech cockpits are actually used in, in Portugal. Some land centres use them. I think that's how the company got started originally. Uh, and that's probably why they're such a, a, a chunky, solid design, because they're expected to be abused a little bit. But I, uh, I hope this, uh, this expanded on, uh, on the review video and uh, let you know a bit more about it. If you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments and I can do another update video and we'll look at some other components on it. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. I will see you in the next video we do. Uh, goodbye.